WIB is the Basin's first television station from 1953 until now and beyond. We're always first, always accurate, and always proud to call the Basin home. Watch ABC Big 2 News. Get ready for your day with meteorologist Ryan DePhillips. From Midland, Odessa, and Big Spring, this is ABC Big 2 News at 10. New at 10, we are getting new details tonight from the Department of Public Safety. Four people, including two children, have died in a car crash involving a semi. The crash happened last night just before 10 o'clock in Dawson County on Highway 180, 12 miles west of La Mesa. DPS said a Nissan Versa with two adults and two kids was traveling westbound on Highway 180. A tractor trailer was stuck in a ditch in the eastbound lanes after trying to attempt a U-turn on the road. The semi's trailer was still across the westbound lane. The sedan struck the back end of the trailer and DPS said it killed all four people inside of the sedan. 62-year-old Marie Dupree and 78-year-old Connie Carroll were killed, according to troopers. Two children, a 10-year-old boy and an 11-year-old girl were also killed. All were from Seminole. The driver of the semi, 43-year-old Jose Lopez of Miami, Florida, was not hurt. This investigation is still ongoing. Also now at 10 o'clock, two deadly mass shootings over this weekend. Three people have died and 14 others are hurt after a shooting near a bar in downtown Chattanooga, Tennessee. And in Philadelphia, three people were killed and 11 others hurt in a shooting in a popular entertainment district. Then apparently shots ring out. I come outside to look and I see a ton of people. Everything got crazy after that. And thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Rob Tuke. There is a manhunt underway for the shooter in Philadelphia. Among the dead there, a second grade resident advisor. ABC's Janae Norman reports in all, more than a dozen mass shootings nationwide happened this weekend alone. The urgent manhunt underway tonight in Philadelphia after police say multiple gunmen opened fire into a crowd, leaving at least two people dead and nearly a dozen others injured. We got multiple victims. According to authorities, just after 11.30 p.m., officers patrolling South Street, a busy area with bars and restaurants, heard gunshots. The panic and chaos captured by surveillance cameras as the large crowd flees the gunfire. Officers on location began to render first aid to the wounded. Authorities reviewing this video, which appears to show a fight before the shooting erupted. One of the men died. Police say an officer then witnessed a man firing into a crowd and that the officer fired back. We believe striking him. The unknown male dropped his handgun on the sidewalk and ran southbound. Authorities recovering at least two guns from the scene, one with an extended magazine. Ballistics evidence revealing at least five different weapons were involved. In all, two bystanders were killed, 11 others injured. John Johnson telling ABC station WPVI he was shot in the foot. My back was turned and uh, started shooting at everybody. I see two people, you know, die right in front of my face. So. According to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been more than a dozen mass shootings this weekend alone. In Phoenix Saturday, eight people were shot and a 14-year-old girl killed after authorities say an altercation in a strip mall escalated into a deadly shooting. And overnight in Chattanooga, Tennessee, 14 people were shot there and three more killed after authorities say multiple shooters opened fire at a nightclub. Multiple shots fired, multiple vehicles fleeing the scene. This is the second mass shooting in that city in the last week. I'm tired of standing in front of you talking about guns and bodies. Chattanooga will not tolerate this in our community. Our city will put a stop to this. And that was Janae Norman reporting. And today in El Paso, a crowd gathered to pay their respects to the 19 students and two teachers killed in Uvalde. During the vigil, some in the crowd carried signs reading, Enough is enough, and we are your voice, and shirts like, Youth over guns. And developing now at 10 o'clock, at least 50 people were killed in southwestern Nigeria this morning. Gunmen shot worshippers and set off explosions at a Catholic church. The attackers targeted worshippers as they gathered to mark Pentecost Sunday. The priest who was presiding at the service was abducted, according to authorities. It was not immediately clear who was behind the violent attack.
And also developing tonight the murder investigation of a retired Wisconsin judge in his home on Friday. ABC News has learned of court records that show the suspect's link to the victim. Here's ABC's Phil Lipoff. Tonight, a clear connection between the retired Wisconsin judge shot and killed in his home and the man suspected of pulling the trigger. That man, police say, is 56-year-old Douglas Udi. In a search of Wisconsin court records, ABC News found in 2005, Udi pleaded no contest to armed burglary. Judge John Romer sentenced him to six years in state prison. It's his neighbor's son from across the street is banging on the door saying that someone murdered his father. Friday morning around 6.30, police rushing to the judge's home. Law enforcement briefed on the case tell ABC News Judge Romer was found zip-tied to a chair and fatally shot. Udi found in the basement with a self-inflicted gunshot wound, alive, now in custody at the hospital. Those same sources saying a hit list was found in a car at the scene. The judge's name on that list, along with Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, and Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers. A judge from a rural county is, is targeted and, and, and murdered. Uh, it's just it's a, a important to our, our judiciary and to uh, to a leadership in, in, our, in, our, in our state and our country. So yeah, it's it's a horrible situation. In 2020, a disgruntled lawyer posing as a delivery man went to federal judge Esther Salas's New Jersey home, shot her husband, and killed her son. Since then, she has been pushing Congress to pass legislation protecting judges' privacy. How many more lives have to, to be lost to senseless tragedies? Judges need protection, and they need it now. And all we're asking is our members of Congress listen and really do what, what's ready to... This bill is ready to go. And that was Phil Lipoff reporting. There is bipartisan support for that bill, but Kentucky Senator Rand Paul blocked it, saying he thinks members of Congress should be included in it. Meantime, Judge Salas agrees, but says that that can be a separate bill. She would like to see the current bill passed as soon as possible. And to stay up to date with more developing news and other top stories, just head to our website, yourbasin.com. And taking a live look now from our Midland Tower Cam tonight. It's looking a bit calm outside right now. We had a beautiful sunset with some cotton candy and orange skies. And lately, we've been dealt with some hot, hot weather. Joining us now for a look at the forecast for this upcoming work week is ABC Big 2's Bridget Sarpong. Hi, Bridget. Hey, Rob. And yes, it was a hot day in the base. And now, how hot did we get in our triple digits at 101 degrees? Usually around this time in June, we're definitely used to 94 degree temperatures. Now, you know what? We're hot, but not as hot as how we were back in 2010 when we sat at 109 degrees. I'll have more of this really hot forecast later on the show. Back over to you, Rob. Thank you, Bridget. Now it heads up tonight to hikers heading to Big Bend National Park. A portion of the Hot Springs Trail near the Rio Grande is closed until further notice because of flash floods. The Park Service called it destruction of the trail. Now the section that is closed is located between the historic hotel building and the Hot Spring. Visitors can still drive to the trailhead and access the historic buildings, but should not go beyond the closure signs because of safety concerns. Now, this photo shows the location of the hot spring. Both the foundation and the spring are completely submerged. And the family living inside this home is okay, but they got quite the shock. The damage this lightning strike caused next. And in sports, we take a look at today's highlights from the Diamond. We'll be right back. Midland Medical Lodge. It's not just a place to live. It's a place to call home. Style, I got it from my dad. I got it from mine. I got it from mine. And they all got it from me. Dad's got a style all his own. Macy's has the brands and gift inspiration to celebrate that style. 
From mitigating mice in Midland to tackling ticks in Tall City and wiping out black widows in West Texas, no one knows Midland Odessa pests better than Fox. That's because Fox Pest Control is locally operated and dedicated to keeping our community pest free. We offer free inspections and same day service. Visit foxpestlocal.com for details. Fox Pest Control, local experts, killer results. What makes Best Reviews the best reviews? Nope. They have an unbiased team that researches products in real-world situations to give reliable recommendations on pretty much everything. So you can be confident that whatever you're buying is right for you, no matter what life throws at it. Like your daughter Clementine, for example. So the best reviews, go to bestreviews.com. Seriously, before you buy anything, ever. Hi. My name is Dan Nicholas, owner of Roofs by Nicholas, located here in Midland, Texas. For over the last 30 years, we've been roofing tens of thousands of homes all throughout the entire Permian Basin. And I just wanted you to know that we are still here to serve you. We are the company that you can rely on when it comes to all your roofing needs. So if you have a hole in your roof or you need a whole new roof, give us a call. Roofs by Nicholas, the company that you rely on. Why burn a candle when you can switch to Airwick Essential Mist? It's the modern way to transform fragrance infused with natural essential oils into a mist. Airwick Essential Mist. Connect to nature. Watch Samantha Smarechniak, Matt Fonts, and Ryan DePhillips at 1130. And now, your local weather authority forecast. Well, friends, happy Sunday. It was a sunny Sunday in the basin, but not only that, but it was a hot Sunday in the basin. But now, it's dark and temperatures are cooling down. Taking a look at what we do see, it's very clear outdoors, you know, clear driving conditions. All that you see, that is, it's just clear. Only thing is that you can't feel that heat. Now, currently in this moment, oh, thanks to Roost by Nicholas, but thanks, and currently in this moment, we are sitting at 85 degrees. It is, you know, pretty cool based off of what we did see earlier today when we were in our triple digits. That humidity is sitting pretty low at 12%, dew point 26. Our winds are traveling southwest at 6 miles per hour. Now that sunset did happen around 8.52 p.m. But before that, we were in our triple digits. We sat in at 101 degrees. Usually around this time in June, we're definitely used to 94 degree temperatures. A hot day in the basin, but not as hot as how it were back in 2010 when we were in our triple digits at 109 degrees. So we'll take, you know, those eight degrees cooler. Now taking a look at our lows, we did come in pretty even sitting at 69 degrees. Definitely not too bad whatsoever. Now that temperature change, we are sitting warmer by two degrees in Midland and Odessa. Big Spring sitting pretty much the same along with Seminole in Slider, six degrees warmer in Carlsbad sitting eight degrees warmer. But you know what, Marfa is sitting seven degrees cooler, but they're going to start rising up here soon. Now taking a look at tomorrow, it is going to be a hot day. Perfect enough for that pool but we're going to start off at 6 in the morning at 72 degrees. A very muggy kind of start, but the sun is definitely going to be out. We're going to start it at 72 by the time we get into 8 in the morning. A very mild kind of start. Then we get into noon. We will be warming up quickly, sitting at 94 degrees. However, we get even warmer by the time we get to 5 p.m. That's when we reach those triple digits, sitting at 104 degrees. It's just going to be a very hot kind of afternoon. Not just for, you know, tonight, not just for tomorrow, but also later on in that week, we're going to continue to be in our hundreds. Now we reach our hundreds around 2 p.m. sitting at 102 degrees, 100 degrees in Big Spring, 103 degrees in Wake along with Dryden. And you know what? We're going to have even more 100 degree temperatures, even hotter sitting at 106 in Midland and Odessa, 107 triple digit heat. I asked for and it's here and it's going to stay with us for a very long time into the upcoming week. Around Tuesday around 12 p.m. we will be sitting at 101 degrees in the Midland and Odessa area. A couple heat tips for you guys. The main one, stay hydrated, drink lots of fluid, limit outdoor activities, and find shade if possible, but also never leave the kids or pets unattended. And that is because, you know, we had this thing called lock before, look before you lock. And then looking at our 
allergy forecast. It does show our trees at a moderate level, but our grass and dust sitting pretty low. So do take necessary precautions so that you can enjoy your pool day. Now for tomorrow, it's going to be very hot. So do be sure to hydrate and wear that sunscreen. Now, Rob, here's the thing that's going to happen. We're going to stay in our triple digits all the way until Wednesday, cool on down Thursday, and then we come back up on Friday into our triple digits. I asked for this heat. It's here. So now what we got to do, we got to hydrate and wear our sunscreen. Well, I'm thinking if there's a week to travel for the summer, it's this week. It's definitely this week. I'm going to head yes. to the airport right after this. It, hey, you and me both. Let's book a flight. Let's do it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Bridget. Caught on camera, dramatic new video tonight from Colorado as a home is struck by lightning in a thunderstorm. No one was hurt, but the lightning bolt did leave behind a lot of damage. ABC's Courtney Fromm spoke with a homeowner who didn't even know what happened until she saw her neighbor's video. I'm sitting on the couch watching TV and I kind of just saw this light come across me. Amanda Strawn and her mom fleeing their home in Arvada on Sunday, fearing for the worst. It sounded like a bomb. My hearing went. I couldn't hear anything. As a lightning strike shook and sent sparks across the top of her home. The lightning hit the tree, came down, hit the gutter, and went all the way down the gutter and then started a little mini fire right here. Not knowing what caused the loud explosion at first. We ran out because we thought it was going to be the tree coming down on top of our house. That's what it sounded like. Strawn was met by her neighbors outside. There were sparks flying off the house across the street. So we stepped outside and the neighbors were coming out of their house, kind of holding their ears and wondering what in the world happened. Our neighbors said they had it on their security footage. And so we got to watch the whole thing. With the bolt went several electronics. One TV that will not come on at all. The Xfinity box is completely fried. I have an outlet that's not working. Along with her garage door. Not working. <laughs> it's broken. And the thermostat. And I have no power to it whatsoever. And so my fan is just running 24-7. Thankful everyone in her home is safe. The tree taking most of the hit. So right here, you can see where the tree is completely just blown out. She'll be sad to see it go. I love this tree. Once it strikes a tree, right, it dies from the inside and it comes down. But really hopes the myth that lightning doesn't strike the same place twice is true. I don't know how anyone survives something like that. And now your ABC Big Two Sports. And the Warriors holding on to win game two, tying the series. But the Celtics won game apiece. The Celtics trailed by as many as 29 in this game, which is tied for their second biggest deficit all season. Now, if you were watching the NBA Finals right before this here on ABC Big Two, you saw the result for those just joining us. Warriors took this game, 107 to 88. Game three is on Wednesday at 8 o'clock. Now to Globe Life Field in Arlington. Mariners away, Rangers at home. Second inning, no score. Adalis Garcia crushes a solo home run off George Kirby. His 10th home run of the season. Rangers up 1-0. Third inning, Rangers still up 1. Marcus Simeon blasts a solo home run off Kirby. That brings Rangers up 2-0. Going on now to the seventh inning, game tied at two. Ezekiel Duran hits a solo home run off Andres Munoz. Rangers up 3-2. Going on now to the top of the ninth. Mariners down 5-3. Eugenio Suarez with the hit off Matt Bush. Two runs come in to score. Game tied at five. And we head on to extras. Like extra innings. Yeah, the 10th inning game tied at 5. Brock Burke throws a wild pitch at Adam Frazier. Abraham Toro scores. Mariners up 6-5. That brings us to the bottom of the 10th. Rangers down 6-5 with 2 on and 2 out. Cole Calhoun pops a ball up off Paul Seawald. Cal Rayleigh makes the catch. Mariners, Mariners come back and win 6-5. Now over to the Astros in Kansas City, fourth inning, Astros up 2-0, Kyle Tucker drills one off of Jonathan Heasley for the solo home run. Houston leads there, 3-0, going on now, sixth inning, Royals down 3-0, one on Salvador Perez, blasts one off Framber Valdez for the two-run home run. 
Kansas City down 3-2. Eighth inning, Astros lead 3-2. Jordan Alvarez takes Erodis Vizcano, offering deep for the solo home run. And that brings Houston 4-2. Now ninth inning, Astros lead 4-3. Tucker singles on a line drive. Dubin scores later in the inning. Jeremy Pena fires a sharp ground ball that gets through. One more run scores. Houston leads 7-3. Now to the bottom of the ninth. Royals down 7-3. Ryan Presley throws a pitch inside to Michael A. Taylor. Home plate umpire Vic Carapazzo warns both benches. Presley gets upset and has words with the home plate ump. And Presley gets ejected. But the Astros would go on to win 7-4 anyway. And families are packing up for vacation this summer. And airports, like Bridget and I were talking about, are trying to accommodate the surge of travelers. Find out what they're trying to change next. Order in the app for half price cheeseburger. One Sonic cheeseburger coming right up. I got the ketchup. Putting on the pickles. Order up. Half price Sonic cheeseburgers every Tuesday night. Only when you order in the app. Tonight, Kimmel Game Night is back in prime time. The Warriors versus the Celtics is basically Braveheart with a basketball. With a game of dodge basketball and big man Dax Shepard. It's a double whammy. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel Live, NBA Finals Game Night, tonight on ABC. Earn an associate degree in respiratory therapy from Midland College. This is a 20-month curriculum, 66 semester credit hours. This program prepares students for an allied health specialty that cares for patients with cardiopulmonary deficiencies. makes it easy to cook and clean up meals in no time. So I didn't miss all the fun stuff. Easy prep, cook and clean with Reynolds Wrap. Order for a Sour Patch Kids slush loaf. I'll add the Sour Patch Kids. I'm on the ice cream. Sonic Sour Patch Kids slush float. Watch Samantha Smarechniak, Matt Fox, and Ryan DePhillips at 11.30. There's a pent-up desire to travel, and it's leading to a surge of flyers at the airport. And as summer vacation kicks off for a lot of families, ABC's Gio Benitez has more on the efforts to make flying more of a breeze. Airlines and airports preparing for summer travelers to come back in full force. Just excited about traveling, going somewhere else. With the TSA expecting to screen as many as 3 million passengers a day, Delta CEO Ed Bastian tells us it's time to get ready. This summer is going to be very busy. And we saw that demand over Memorial Day weekend. Thousands of flights canceled after staffing shortages at the airlines. Delta today opening a new terminal at New York's LaGuardia Airport, a $4 billion investment. We look at this and it all looks new and sparkly and beautiful, but what does it mean for the traveler? Sometimes people spend more time in an airport than they actually do on the flight. Right? So the ability to actually create a wonderful experience with efficient uh, service coming through the security channels is going to be a brand new experience for them. Some of the new tech will make its way through airports across the country, like Digital ID, which uses facial recognition technology to get you through checkpoints. No license necessary, and it's already being used in airports like Atlanta and Detroit, and coming soon to LAX and LaGuardia. In the security lane, machines creating 3D images of your bags so you can keep your laptops and other electronics zipped up. And every single sign here, digital. And the clock is ticking. Delta alone is expecting more travelers than it had in 2019. The airlines limiting flights to keep extra staff on hand. 
What we're going to be doing to get through the summer is that we're not going to grow our schedule at all. And that was Gio Benitez reporting. Now, businesses across the country are feeling something. A shortage of workers. And as the summer begins, pools from coast to coast are feeling it too. But when there is a lifeguard shortage, some pools won't be able to open. Here's ABC's Phil Lipoff again with this report. As temperatures rise and schools close for the summer, families, especially kids hoping to escape that heat with a swim, may find one thing missing from their local pool a lifeguard. We are really at minimum levels. A representative from the American Lifeguard Association warning this week that a third of the country's nearly 300,000 public pools could be impacted by an ongoing lifeguard shortage. In Raleigh, North Carolina, half of city pools are closed, while a lack of lifeguards leaves poolside safety measures at risk. In Florida, swimming facilities are struggling to meet hiring quotas. It has been uh, somewhat of a, a challenge, and uh, we hope to correct that. At this conservation park, only eight of an open 16 lifeguard slots are filled so far this year, and that leaves parents concerned. The body of water is bigger than our kids, so we have to be extra cautious. In Illinois, managers at this water park are raising pay by $2 an hour just to attract more lifeguards. It was an unplanned expense, but uh, I would argue a very necessary one because the alternative was not having Dragon Land, and I, I couldn't accept that. And in New York City, the lifeguard shortage threatens the entire summer swimming season. A spokesperson for New York City Parks tells ABC News, like the entire country, it's been a challenge recruiting enough qualified people who can pass the New York City lifeguard requirements and pandemic impacts on recruiting recruitment continue. Still, safety remains the top priority. It may look easy at times, but in order to be a lifeguard, you have to be able to swim 300 yards without stopping. You need to be able to tread water for two minutes with just your legs, and you need to be able to pull a 10-pound object off the bottom of the pool. And when we come back, why a devastating illness is no match for one determined athlete. And as we head to break, a reminder that if you see news happening, share your videos and photos on social media with us. Make sure you use the hashtag ABCBigTwoNews. And if you haven't done it yet, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We are ABCBigTwoNews. ABC Big Two Sports, brought to you by Glashine Vaez and Enderman Injury Lawyers. We know these roads and drive them too. At Glashine Vaez and Enderman Injury Lawyers, we handle big crashes, especially those involving big trucks. For catastrophic injury or wrongful death, call the people you know. Glashine Vaez and Enderman Injury Lawyers. You want to feel important. You want to be a part of something bigger, something that matters and can help change things. You want to feel like you belong. We know. We felt that way too. And that's why we did something about it. We are just Army National Guard soldiers. We are normal people just like you. And together, we can make a difference. Take on your legacy. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. At Academy Sports and Outdoors, family traditions run deep. This Father's Day, find all the gifts you need to make it special. We've got what you need to get out there. Happy Father's Day from everyone at Academy Sports and Outdoors. The Vineyard, Midland's premier master planned community, impeccable high-end luxury with resort-style amenities. These Silverleaf homes are located close to Green Tree Country Club and are walking distance to Faskin Elementary. Contact Alexa to schedule your private showing. Ugh, allergy sufferers. Bedtime means it's time to take Zizol. Zizol relieves allergies while you sleep, so you wake refreshed. Plus, it works faster than Claritin and on first dose, provides the same relief as Zyrtec in a pill nearly half the size. Be wise all. Take Zizol at night. The state championship is in his future, but tetanus isn't. Did you know teenagers still need vaccines beyond childhood? Ask your child's doctor and keep them protected for the future. Every dose matters. At Glasheen, Vias, and Enderman Injury Lawyers, we know how to get results for our clients because our experience is with catastrophic injury and wrongful death cases. We win, and we win big. We're Glasheen, Vias, and Enderman Injury Lawyers. Despite a debilitating diagnosis, one woman is refusing to let it slow her down. She's not letting ALS define her either. 
And tonight, ABC's Lindsay Davis reports this woman has pledged to compete, complete 50 marathons to show really just how strong she is. Six years ago, Andrea Pete set out on a mission even she wasn't sure she could achieve. In 2014, she was diagnosed with ALS, commonly known as Lou Gehrig disease. She was 33 years old and given just two to five more years to live. But Andrea has repeatedly defied those odds. Determined to set a new record and raise awareness and money for ALS research, she challenged herself to become the first person with ALS to complete 50 marathons in 50 states. It all started at the Shamrock Marathon in Virginia Beach, using a recumbent trike to propel herself. Here she is with a medal after finishing a marathon in Texas. And this was Andrea last Saturday at the start of her 50th marathon in Alaska, wearing the white helmet. Eight years after her diagnosis, pedaling under her own power for 26.2 miles. Five hours and three minutes later, she was met with cheers at the finish line. The team of supporters holding her 49 hard-earned medals and her husband David giving Andrea her 50th and final award. A true story of determination. That was Lindsay Davis reporting. When we come back, Bridget will have one last look at the forecast. Stay with us. The Bob Mills Memorial Day free event was so much fun, you asked us to extend it. This handsome reclining sofa and love seat and the $800 matching recliner, free. Don't miss the Memorial Day extended free event at Bob Mills. What makes News Nation different than the other network out there? Well, they're giving it to you down the middle. They're focused on the facts and not opinions. It's just straight to the point, fact-based news. If you're able to see yourself in the network. I think News Nation is the most honest news station out there. They give you a chance to decide on your own. It's neither left or right, and it's news for everyone. News Nation gives you straight, unbiased news. And if more people would watch News Nation, we'd have a lot less division in this country. If your floors look like this, then it's time to call West Texas Commercial Cleaning. Using one of the most advanced floor cleaners available, they'll make your floors shine. West Texas Commercial Cleaning. Let us bring your floors back to life. We're checking out. We'll miss you. How was your stay? We traveled all over, and this hotel is our favorite. We love the free breakfast buffet in the mornings and the omelet station. My favorite thing is the super fast Wi-Fi in the room. I can get my work done and plug my PS4 into that huge 50-inch TV and game all night. This is the best sleep I've ever had on the most comfortable bed. And I love the Starbucks coffee and the Bath & Body Works soaps in the room. We'll see you again soon. The MCM Grande Hotel and Fun Dome, Odessa. If you think you need to speed, keep in mind, officers are out in force and in traffic. You never know where they may appear. So slow down or pay up. Be safe. Drive smart. The Bob Mills Memorial Day free event was so much fun, you asked us to extend it. The six-piece bedroom, just $19.97, and I'm giving you the $400 mattress free. Don't miss the Memorial Day extended free event at Bob Mills. Well, let's take one last look at that seven day forecast. Now tomorrow, we're gonna continue to be in our triple digits at a high of 104 degrees. Then Tuesday, 106. And then Wednesday, we're still in our triple digits at 102. Now Thursday, we are a couple of degrees. You know, we come in a little bit short. If you wanna call it decreasing our temperatures, a little bit cooler, then that's what we got. We're gonna be mild at 99 degrees. Then Friday, back on up to our triple digits, tying and really pretty much twinning with Monday at 104. Then we get to Saturday and Sunday, back to our triple digits at 101 and 102. Now, taking a look at our lows, we're going to sit pretty consistent in our 70s, so we'll take what we can get. Only thing we got to remember is it's going to be a mild kind of start, a muggy kind of start, so do be sure to hydrate throughout the kind of throughout the day, and also wear your sunscreen, find some shade, and if you can, you know, stay in the AC as much as possible, but the number one thing that we're going to have to do, Rob, is make sure that we stay hydrated because it's going to be super duper hot.
I need to be following your advice, Bridget. It's all out there for me to, to do, but, but still, I, I'm always dehydrated. That's the problem. You and me both. So, you know, we're going to have to keep tabs on each other so that we're like, hey, Rob, did you drink water? <laughs> hey, it's a buddy system for the week, especially yes. in this weather. It works for me. Yes. And for all our furry friends out there, just make sure to keep their paws off that, the hot ground. It's always a, always a concern this time of year, making sure that our, our pets and our yes. dogs and cats are doing really well. Yes. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for news tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Good Morning Basin starts at 5 o'clock in the morning, and we'll see you next week. Good night.